नेक्स्ट वील गो टू डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग चैनलाइजेशन चैनलाइजेशन और समटाइम्स इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज चैनल पार्टीशन इज अ मल्टीपल एक्सेस मेथड इन विच द अवेलेबल बैंडविड ऑफ द लिंक इज शेयर इन टाइम फ्रीक्वेंसी और थ्रू कोड्स से दी चैनलाइजेशन आर ग्रुप्ड इन टू अ थ्री कैटेगरीज एफ डी एम ए टी डी एम ए एंड सी डी एम ए विल स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग रिगार्डिंग एफ डी एम ए एफ डी एम ए मीन्स फ्रीक्वेंसी डिविजन मल्टीपल एक्सेस मेथड हियर द अवेलेबल बैंडवेड ऑफ द चैनल इज डिवाइडेड इन टू अ फ्रीक्वेंसी बैंड समटाइम्स वी ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज सब बैंड द टोटल बैंडवेड द टोटल बैंडवेड ऑफ द मीडियम गॉट डिवाइडेड इन टू अ सब बैंड and each station is allocated such a subband to send its data the allocated channel to the station will going to be dedicated for that particular station say for example if this blue color band one which is shown over here in this figure okay which is allocated we'll assume that it is allocated to station 1 this will going to remain with station 1 as long as that communication happens okay this this particular channel will not going to be shared by or will going to be used by any other stations in the system this is only reserved for station 1 and apart from that now between each bands or sometimes we call it as a sub bands there will be a small gap okay between each sub band there will be a small gap so this gap we call it as a guard band okay just to avoid the overlapping of channels or overlapping of these sub bands we use a guard bands okay it is helping us to say take care regarding that there should not be a overlap of sub bands now here the stations are not going to get the complete bandwidth of the link so this link has some bandwidth that complete bandwidth will not going to be available to any of the stations so the complete bandwidth itself got divided into a different stations okay so this is all about frequency division multiple access method next is time division multiple access now in this case so stations share a bandwidth of the channel in time here we are dividing the stations on the basis of time now the complete bandwidth of the medium the shared medium is available to a station in the given slot of time say for example say the time slot t1 is reserved for station 1 and t2 if it is reserved for station 2 t3 if it is reserved for 3 and t4 for station 4 okay so during t1 during t1 time slot the station 1 will go to get the complete bandwidth of the shared medium okay so and once a t2 starts the complete bandwidth will now going to be allocated to station 2 and so on it will happen so every station will going to get their turn based on their time slot so this is how the time division multiple access works here at any given time okay say only one channel is using this medium and this particular channel is time shared between different stations next is code division multiple access so now here we are talking of dividing the stations on the basis of the codes that are allocated to a station now to understand regarding this code division multiple access we'll talk regarding a, a system with four stations so one which is shown over here station 1 station 2 3 and 4 like this we have a system with the four stations and the d1 d2 one which is shown over here will indicate 
the data that will going to be transmitted by these stations. Now, we will assume that the C1, C2, C3 and C4, okay, which are assigned to every station, they are a special codes which are assigned to the stations for a transmission purpose. Okay. Now, we assume that this codes which are assigned to a stations have say basically two properties. Okay. So, this communication is possible only if these codes satisfy the following properties. So, we will assume that these codes have that properties. Which are those properties? So, I will just mention it over here. Say, the first property says that if we multiply each code by another, we should get 0. Say, for example, if I multiply C1 and C2, okay, the outcome should be 0. Okay, if I multiply C1 by C2 or C1 with, for that matter, with any other code, okay. So, same is the case with all other codes, okay. Say, C1, if I multiply with C3 or C4, okay. So, it will going to result in a 0. So, that means, if we multiply each of the code by another, we should get 0. The second property, what it says is, if we multiply each code by itself, we should get 4. Uh, this 4 is mentioned in connection with this particular example. He, in this system, there are 4 stations. So, the outcome must be 4. So, whenever we multiply the same codes, okay, whenever we multiply each code by itself, okay, the answer should be uh, equal to, one second, it should be equal to n in general, where n is number of stations in the system. In this case, the n is 4. I hope it is clear. Okay. So, if the chip, uh, these codes or sometimes we also call it as a chip codes, if they satisfy these two conditions, then the code division multiple access communication is possible. So, especially in code division multiple access, we are not talking of dividing link bandwidth or we are not talking of sharing the link bandwidth in term, uh, in, in time. Okay. So, here all the stations are allowed to use complete bandwidth at all the time. But they are now going to be separated with the help of chip code. How exactly, uh, uh, say, it works, that we will see to it. Now, we will see how exactly these chip codes will look like. Okay. So, these chip codes which are shown over here as an example are for the station with a uh, system with four stations. Okay. Chip one, the chip code one will look like plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one and 2 will look like plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. They are unique in nature. Okay. No two chip codes are same or they are not similar. Okay. So, they are unique in nature and when you look at these chip codes, okay, each sequence, okay, each chip code or this sequence is made up of say n elements because in this case there are four elements. That means my system has four stations. Okay. In general, each chip code will go to have n elements where n is number of stations and they will go to exhibit those two properties what we have discussed earlier. If I multiply the chip code by itself, okay, it will go to result in n. Whereas, say if I multiply two different chip codes, it will go to result in 0. Say for example, so, I will talk regarding this multiplication operation. So, if I multiply plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 with say same chip. So, the multiplication will be done this way. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Okay. So, sometimes we also call it as inner product. Okay. So, 
that is 1 plus 1 it becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 into plus 1 it becomes plus 1 and I need to add it so if I multiply this with this it becomes a plus 1 and last one is also a plus 1 so the outcome you see if I add all those four it becomes 4 say I talk of say multiplying two different chip, chip sequences I'll multiply here itself so this is C3 that is plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 I'll take plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 okay plus 1 into plus 1 it becomes say plus 1 plus 1 into minus 1 becomes minus 1 minus plus again it becomes minus and minus minus it becomes plus okay so it becomes plus 1 now plus 1 minus 1 get cancels plus 1 minus 1 get cancels and it will want to be 0 so if we do this kind of a multiplication or if we multiply two different chip codes the outcome definitely it will going to be a 0 and if we multiply chip code by itself the outcome will going to be <coughs> n or it is how many number of stations are there in the system that value it will going to get okay so this is what is a speciality of these six chip sequences and whatever this multiplication i have shown over here this we call it as say inner product of two equal sequences okay so <coughs> now here i i used a different notations that is plus 1 minus 1 okay so especially this plus 1 here uh, uh, basically uh, now in cdma discussion we will going to use okay so minus 1 to represent a data 0 silence will going to represent say it is to represent a 0 whereas 1 bit 1 will going to be represented by plus 1 okay so 0 will be represented by minus 1 silence silence indicates here when station does not have anything to transmit so that situation will going to represent it by 0 we, we, we will going to have a three different situations here for that reason we are using these notations say whenever a station something to send okay so whenever these stations have something to send that time we need a, some kind of a notation to represent what data bit it is transmitting say for example if it is transmitting a zero okay if station one is transmitting at this particular time instant it is transmitting zero this will going to be represented as minus one this will going to be represented as minus one okay and if station three at the same time if it does not have anything to transmit that particular situation now see we need to represent here a silent situation okay once st the station one which is not transmitting anything so to represent its state we use this notation that is zero okay we are using a notation zero to represent the silent state of a station whereas data bit one will going to be represented by plus one okay now if station one if it is transmitting a bit zero okay if it is transmitting a bit zero say for example say station zero is transmitting bit zero which in turn will going to be represented by minus one okay now before say putting this particular thing onto the say medium it gets multiplied with the chip code the chip code of station one is the plus one plus one plus one okay and plus one okay and if we multiply this whole thing with minus one it becomes okay uh, it, it it becomes say minus one minus one minus one minus one so the outcome of multiplying minus one that bit okay that zero with a chip code will going to result in this type of a chip sequence okay so this type of a sequence which will going to be put on the medium so this in turn which will going to be represented in the form of a signal this way so this zero is a 
this uh, arrow mark is a reference line so to represent minus 1 we are using this symbol okay so this is representing so minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 which is the outcome of multiplication of these two things d1 and chip sequence okay so like this say when it comes to a silent state representation so all the bits will going to be zero it is a simply no signal okay now to represent plus one okay so it again goes with the uh, what type of a chip sequence that station is assigned with okay so based on that the outcome will going to be this way okay and when we add all these things okay see uh, look at the thing over here we are talking of adding all these things say whatever this is transmitting whatever this is transmitting in the end it gets added on the channel okay so all of them gets added on the channel so that addition okay when you add all these things okay when we add all these quantities which are represented in the form of a signal so the outcome will going to be this way okay the outcome is this one okay so this is how we are representing the data now see here it is negative here it is a positive and it is a negative outcome is negative you see here it is positive negative positive i mean negative negative and this is positive so the outcome is this one now when it comes to this situation you see minus 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 so you have a such a large peak of signal on the minus side so this is outcome of say clubbing all these signals okay clubbing all these signals which are generated by different stations so this is what is an outcome that we will see on the channel okay so this is what we are represented there as okay so it is represented as d1 c1 plus d2 c2 plus d3 c3 plus d4 c4 this is what is the final outcome or the outcome of adding all these signals next is say we talk of this sequence generation how exactly these sequences will going to be generated so to generate these chip sequences naturally the question arises how to generate these chip sequences how we assume that this is plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 okay so to generate this we use a walsh table okay that we will going to discuss okay uh, how exactly these things will go to be generated that is done with the help of walsh walsh table okay so uh, when we talk of walsh table okay it is a, a matrix okay in which each row each row uh, is a sequence of chips okay say depending on the size of a, a say a number of stations that are present in the system okay we're going to have a matrix now each row of this matrix will now going to be representing the chip code we'll see one such example over here and the general rule for creation okay so the general rule for creating is this one say we talk of say w1 uh, if we know what is w1 so it is possible to create say w2 so this is created with the help of w1 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 and complement of w1 okay so this is how we are creating once we see a uh, example okay you will come to know what exactly how exactly it will going to generate the things now to start with we'll assume that okay my w1 is plus 1 uh, w1 is plus 1 so with this assumption we'll try to create so if w1 is plus 1 according to this general rule of walsh table okay so w2n so we are creating a chip sequence for system with two stations so according to this rule so the first element has to be a w1 w1 the second one is again a w1 the, say 
second row first element is w1 and say the third element is uh, fourth element is w1 complement so it becomes say complement of one is minus one so this is what is a chip sequence okay now the chip sequence for station with uh, system with two stations is this one that is plus one and minus one okay so plus one plus one is c1 and plus one minus one is c2 okay. now to create a chip sequence with the same example say if w1 is given to you and if i ask you to create a chip sequence for a system with four station w4 okay how to create it it is to be it will go to be created this way say first we need to obtain what is w2 okay with the help of w1 so it will go to be say this one uh, which is minus 1 uh, say we will assume it start with w1 is equal to plus 1 so this is what is given to you and we are, if we ask you to create the chip sequences for a system with four stations so it will be created this way first we need to find out w2 so that is plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and minus 1 because we started with the plus 1 yes and to create chip sequence with four stations okay so it is w2 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 and complement of w2 what is w2 that we need to substitute over here the w2 is plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 so again w2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 next is this is again a w2 plus 1 plus 1 min, uh, plus 1 minus 1 okay so next last one is it is complement of that so the complement of that is say where all plus comes it becomes a minus minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and last one is plus 1 so then the chip sequence you see that what we have shown in the beginning that is plus 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 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 so these are the four chip sequences which we have shown over here in the uh, in this discussion i have shown it over here so these are the chip sequences which are obtained with the help of those walsh tables okay i hope it is clear like this it is possible to create chip sequences for any number of stations let us take uh, say simple example okay say find a chip sequences for station with two stations that is just now i have discussed and a four stations okay so it is created with the help of these walsh tables so first i started with plus one plus one plus one minus one which is obtained with the help of say w1 is equal to plus one in case in case if w1 is given as minus 1 in that case the chip sequences will going to change if you start w1 is equal to minus 1 in that case w2 will going to become this one okay then w4 also will going to change accordingly okay so this is how you need to create the chip sequences with the help of walsh tables first you need to generate different walsh tables that is you have to start with w1 okay normally the w1 value will going to be given to you with the help of that you need to create w2 and depending on the requirement you have to go for creation of different size table okay these sizes are of say only power of 2 it will going to be uh, say of all the time it is power of 2 so this is all regarding say 
um, uh, uh, this uh, uh, channelization and in the next class we will going to discuss regarding ARP and Ethernet. Thank you very much.